This is my final sign off. Um, after 22 years of serving the citizens of the state of Washington, um, being asked to leave because I am dirty. State 1034, this is the last time you'll hear me in a state patrol car. And Jay Ansley can kiss my ass. Allow me to introduce you to a niche comedy format that you'll probably wish you never heard of. Slideshows making fun of people who died of COVID. You can find this stuff scattered around on TikTok, on Twitter, and on Instagram. But maybe the best place to find it is the Herman Cain Award subreddit. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a message board that borrows its name from Herman Cain, the Republican politician who died of COVID after going maskless to an indoor Trump rally. Even though Herman Cain was never an outright COVID denier himself, and he died before vaccines were available, this community gives awards in his name to everyday people who've died after making a quote, public declaration of their anti-mask, anti-vax, or COVID hoax views. In the last six months, the subscriber numbers have skyrocketed up to almost a half a million people. A lot of the posts are made by people who have a COVID denier family friend or acquaintance on Facebook. And the posts tend to follow a format. First, a couple of screenshots of somebody posting anti-vaccination articles, or maybe a couple of Trump memes. Then, some screenshots of them posting about how they've caught COVID, but they're confident they'll beat it. Then come the frantic posts from the family who are asking for prayers. If a person is hospitalized, they're officially nominated. And then, the grand morbid finale. A screenshot of a GoFundMe for the funeral. At this point, the person is upgraded, and they're finally given the Herman Cain Award, and their death is immortalized in shame online. The comments are all pretty similar in that you don't really see anybody expressing empathy. What you do see is jokes. People saying, hey, that person got what's coming to them, or making fun of their political beliefs, or just calling them stupid. Now, some people might say, yo, that's just the internet. What do you expect? But I don't think it's fair to single them out. This conversation has been in the mainstream for a while, from cable news to comedy. Vaccinated person having a heart attack? Yes, come right on in, we'll take care of you. Unvaccinated guy who gobbled horse goo? Rest in peace, Wheezy. You're, that's... One columnist even argued that it's not necessarily wrong to mock anti-vaxxers who die of COVID. Every one of these deaths is a teachable moment. And unfortunately, we haven't been learning from the lesson we should be hearing from them. The conversation about COVID has changed and nobody's really sure what to do about it. We've gone from feeling compassion to something a little more complicated, especially toward people who won't get vaccinated. We've been patient, but our patience is wearing thin and your refusal has cost all of us. Maybe you've noticed it too. Not too long ago, we aired a segment on some anti-vaxxers who got COVID. And a lot of the comments from you, the viewers, said that you don't feel bad for them. Maybe you used to care, but you've heard this same story so much, you just burned out on it. You almost can't care anymore. Kind of like how when there's another mass shooting, a lot of people just shrug their shoulders. We've entered a phase of mass compassion fatigue. And the joke stuff might feel a little shocking, but this isn't the first time it's happened. In the late 1970s, when nearly a thousand of Jim Jones cult followers committed suicide by drinking poison, people were horrified. But they also started making jokes about it. And nowadays, we even use the phrase drinking the Kool-Aid as a tongue-in-cheek way to refer to somebody who isn't smart enough to realize that they're being manipulated. Now, even if you thought those people had it coming because they were foolish enough to be in a cult, you might not have wanted to say that out loud at first. We often don't want to publicly admit that we enjoy watching other people suffer. But in the same way that the internet is great for finding out that you're not the only one who likes cat videos, it's also really good at helping you find out that you're not the only one who doesn't care anymore if anti-vaxxers die, or that maybe there's other people who are also angry that they're putting the rest of us in danger. I mean, there is a more charitable way to think about these dead anti-vaxxers. Just like in Jonestown, these are victims of misinformation. Those COVID denial memes infected them first, and that made them susceptible to the virus. We could feel sorry for them. But the justice-based schadenfreude of the Herman Cain Awards, that's an emotional response. It isn't exactly generous, 
but that's not the point. Maybe for some people, making those cruel jokes is how they process the feelings of being completely powerless during a pandemic. When history teachers in the future talk about the early 2020s, they're gonna have a lot on their hands. They love to talk about Trump, the vaccines, the variant waves, ivermectin, and the fact that a lot of us were laughing at dead people.